Welcome. Earlier this week, I asked you to tag some of your favorite photos on Instagram using the hashtag workwithcubicle. Now I'm about to go through your suggestions and select 30 images that I will use to curate an Instagram grid and talk about composition. I have exactly one hour and a half before the live, so let's see what we have. Oh, wow. All jokes aside, guys, I did go through every single photo and saved a pile of some fantastic images for the workshop. I couldn't pick 30, but it's okay. This means we have a lot to curate with. Composition is all about gut feeling. Um, it's also logic and common sense. My main um, lesson in composition is that you cannot overthink things. Composition, composition is essentially putting yourself in someone else's shoes. That sounds gross, but this is what user experience is all about. Let's get started. I have collected my top favorite images from the pool that I received. This was incredibly hard. All of your photos were amazing. I think all of these photos are actual photos by my followers. Illustrations, paintings, and photos by my followers. These aren't photos found on Pinterest or internet, the internet. Let's get to Photoshop. Let's open Photoshop back up again. Create new, or you go up to file new, and this box pops up. Uh, let's do 600 by 600 pixels. Now you can see on in this drop down here, you have pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters. You really don't want to open 600 centimeters because that's going to kill slash burn your computer. Um, click on the artboards as usual. Resolution 72 PPI. Now PPI stands for practically perfect individual. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, PPI stands for Pen Pennsylvania um, private investigator. Hi. Uh, no, it's pixels per inch. I think my versions were more fun. These color profiles, sRGB, don't touch this. Like, I don't even know what most of these mean. Like, I don't even know what they do. Square pixel don't touch this either. Here, I'm not going to rename these artboards because these are simple guidelines and we don't need to export any of these. These are for, this is for composition only. Now I like making it kind of look like Instagram. So if you zoom in, I just like giving like these smaller gaps instead of the, uh, the, the default big gap that happens when you click on con command J or control J if you're on PC. So using the move tool, which is at the very left top here, um, what you do is you just grab that artboard and you move it. That's it. So click on artboard one, shift, and click on the three, the third one up top. And then you either, uh, either click on command J in your keyboard, or you drag it down to this box with a plus sign. And that, and that creates three more artboards. And you would just kind of move that like that. And you're just gonna take the six and multiply it by two and exponential growth, here we come. 30 boxes ready to go. Now, if you want this to look even more like Instagram, uh, I don't recommend it because sometimes images have white, but you can change by right-clicking on the, the outside the canvas and change it to like white or light gray. Okay, so you have these ready for yourself. Now, I don't really know where to begin. <laughs> Notice that when you're working with visuals, you there's no rules for composition, but there's a lot of pattern. Ironically, that pattern becomes your own rule book. So this is how exactly how you make your own branding. There's no guide to how to perfectly brand. It's just a set of patterns that designers decide for their clients or you decide for yourself. Before I do anything practical, I just want to say two things. 
Remember the functionality limitations of Instagram. It's not, uh, there's no search functionality, not at least not in your own grid. There's also, you can't click on links. So you kind of want to focus on content that can either be digested there and then, uh, or, or help build your brand as a whole. My second point about limitations on Instagram is physical, obviously. We're using this tiny device and it fits in our hand. So the screen is this big, the font sizes. If it's too small, ain't nobody gonna read that, honestly. If, if the photo is too small, ain't nobody gonna look at that. Well, if there is one rule, it is follow the eye. We're gonna start with this. I absolutely love this image. Now, when I said follow the eye, it means literally follow the gaze of the image subject. This image subject has is looking to the left, so I would just simply not put it on the right side. Yeah, this, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, your grid is, you wanna keep the eye within the grid. You don't want the attention dispersing. This you will also notice with lots of photography, composition, magazine composition. Uh, when you look at my favorite Jamie Beck's photos, all her composition works with the gaze. So, you know, a flower might be dropping its petal and then the petal draws your attention to, I don't know, the, the bottle that's underneath. Another rule is color. I say rule, but it's an advice, I suppose. <gasps> color is a good, good rule, good pattern that you can start. I wanna show you, before I go into this, I wanna show you three of my favorite uh, people on Instagram that actually do uh, curate their grids, you can tell. Okay, so one of my favorites, for instance, is my lovely Eleonora Carisi. You can see that she goes with tones. So it's all very tonal. It's really color based, right? I love her feed because she doesn't take herself too seriously, but everything is beautiful. Another one is my lovely Lena Lademan, my German sister from another mister. She also, as you can see, goes with color, but hers is more of a representation of following the gaze. So a lot of graphic elements lead the the eye see green green and then a random photo of green that links to her moss photos to a random plant photo and yeah and then these are some patterns that she established for herself another one that i love is my very own simon schmidt who is my digital baby you can see that there's a lot of color work here too for instance especially here you can tell the red picks up from the background up here and then it picks up from that post and then a lot of it's tonal as well okay so i'm also going to go with a bit of color this is an image that i love i believe this is by lissy one of my favorite gals um, I could not, I genuinely could not believe this was her photo. This literally looks like a painting, you know? So I'm just gonna drop this in because it matches with the yellow of this illustration. And all you need to do is you just need to extend it outside and center it. Yeah, do it until you see the, the pink guide. And I think what would neutralize this is maybe something black and white. Uh, I just love this image so much. And uh, I'm putting this here because the gaze follows it back. Uh, it pushes it back into the feed. Let's go with something that is more fashion. I like that the plate really draws the eye down, but also sideways. So this is why I'm putting it there. But I love how soft it is. I love the, the contrast between kind of hard, hard edges and the really soft softness of the shirt. Let's do some typography. Again, color matching. I think we can do something that kind of closes off the yellow. Maybe this guy, yeah, that's not thing too hard. I don't wanna fall in the trap of beige. Now that this is something that's very personal for me. I think it's very easy to make a beige black and white grid. Uh, and we're gonna introduce a bit of color in here. Now, the minute you introduce a lot of color, I like kind of neutralizing it with 
a black and white image like this. I'm using this because in the mass centralizes everything. Also, you are working with images, so you are more than welcome to change things. Like for instance, I want this here because I want also to pick up on the skin tones. Uh, but because of this white space in the background here, I think the eye might go out. Click on free transform tool, which is command T on your keyboard. And you go down to edit, transform, flip horizontal. Yeah, there you go. And then that kind of just blocks out the left side and draws the, the eye back in again. Um, as you can see, this is way more than 30 images. I've just loaded this up so I have a good, oh, let's use that one. I have a good uh, bank of photo to use. Ah, okay, this is a good one. So I saved this to just to demonstrate the fact that you don't actually just need to rely on art images or artistic images. This is a, a literally a picture that's taken um, on a holiday. I will put a white background on this. Uh, yeah, this works. Okay, so I think we need architecture at this point. Oh, I love this. Apparently, I didn't realize Singapore had this kind of architecture. So I will put this here, and because the gaze goes goes outwards, um, I will do once again a transform to reflect the image. Yep, I love that that she does a series with with just this mirror, but the, her poses and what she wears changes, and I th I think it's beautiful. Yeah, and her knees are pointing inwards, so that's that's my only reason I'm putting it in here. But something circular like this would normally kind of go in the middle. Because I love this video. It looks like a Monet paint painting, but I just screenshot it really badly so you can see the video icon. I'm gonna pop this here so it kind of makes sense. Ooh, we're gonna pick up on kind of the sensualness of all of this that we did downstairs here, and then pick up on the blue of the sky. A vintage bent. I like the texture of it. You don't really know what it is until you kind of look into it. I really like that. Let's use this one. When you start using, incorporating typography into your layouts or just your grid, basically, you'll notice that typography kind of gives you a lot of freedom to, to pair it with images. images. I love that this, how this goes together. This is a color that I would never use just because, you know, it's, it's a very difficult color to match up, but I really like this image. I think it's, pelicans in Bangkok or somewhere, somewhere in, the, in Asia. But I love that the, the sky color looks a bit fake, but it goes with the typography because it just kind of looks kind of like a dream. Shall we pick up something from orange? Oh, I love this image. Looks like Hermes, doesn't it? I mean, it's literally just a couch that's orange, but it makes the image look really expensive. I know that I uh, screenshotted it really shoddily. <laughs> so you can see like random arrows here. I'm sorry about that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just like kind of clean it up. Where is it? Clean it up on Photoshop. I'll just retouch it. Clean tool. Yeah, just gonna fix this. Okay. All right, so it's cleaned. Now that we've kind of introduced more vibrant colors, maybe we could start thinking about using something that's usually not of your repertoire, like like this kind of really punchy image. Yeah, that'll pick up the, the oranges. It's a beautiful image, yeah. And these are literally from all different people across the world. How crazy is that? Like, you know, you just need to, apply the same, apply the same patterns and the logic and it'll, it'll make sense for most images. Oh, I love this one. It looks like an optical illusion, but I think her hand is just really close to the camera. So this actually reminds me of the Andre Kurtesh uh, photography that, is, that we shared with Cam like a couple lives ago where the images are distorted. I'm gonna make this a true black and white. Put down the saturation, yeah, there we go. Yep, I've just added an adjustment layer. Yep, yep, that already looks really neat. Okay, there we go. This kind of goes, there's like a slight orange undertone here. This is a photo that someone took in a flower market. Isn't this amazing? 
Okay, we're gonna put it here. I'm gonna pick, let it pick up all the oranges, but also we're gonna pick up the sensu sensuality, uh, sensuality of the the kind of feminine branding that we've been instilling. Cutie, doggy bro. Again, I don't know how she or he managed to make it so sensual. Okay, and then this again. Can't believe this is a photograph. It looks like a painting, it looks like a Rembrandt. Uh, if you're shooting with a cup, maybe think about doing a still life of the cup as well. Shoot everything that you, you, you're you holding so that your content creation session um, is more fruitful. So you come out with you know a still life and a portrait and a landscape and something black and white, something textural, textural. Yep, I like that. Don't we love this pic? I mean, it was clearly taken horizontal, but she's rotated it. Keep it horizontal or or however you shot it here let's add something that's kind of unusual like something that you wouldn't necessarily go for that is you know in the line of beige and black and white yeah here and then it picks up the textures from underneath i like that it's glowing i don't know why or how i'm gonna put it here it's it's a kind of image that you would put in the center as well because it's like a central image so yeah I mean, that, that's 10 10 rows and that that's so short. Oh my goodness, this is like, you know, three days of posting. <laughs> you could decide not to do this and have three images of pasta that you had in three different days. You know, it's it's your journey, it's your Instagram. You can follow any damn pattern that you see. Also, I'm gonna save this because, you know, if, if this crashes and I lose everything, I'm just gonna... What should we call it? What should we call this? Um, wine is not a cocktail.psv. Remember, save it in large document format, not PSD. I personally use it black, dark mode. But I think if you have a good composition, it doesn't matter, look. This is dark mode. It, it looks even better in black. Ouch, it looks amazing in black, actually. It punches out the color a lot more. And same thing when you go white. Like, oh my gosh, look how clean that looks. Oh, how about this? Let's, let's change it to a, a different color. Will it outlast a, a, di um, a ridiculous color? Yes. <laughs> I would quite genuinely see this as a website, like like a funky French website with awesome typography. It works. It will look nicer with red. Let's try red. I would probably, oh my gosh, look at this in red. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Even with like a random green, it looks awesome.